briefing, which was, they had to sign a non-disclosure agreement before the briefing began, they were told that they were putting on, being put on standby for evacuation, that they may get as much as two weeks' notice, they may not, and they started talking to the, telling these dependents about Nibiru, Planet X, and how this planetary-sized object was going to uh, cause massive flooding uh, on all coastal areas. Uh, the map they were shown is very similar to the map of my DVD. I need to get a copy of that to you, by the way, Mike, if I have it. And um, that was pretty much it for that that source. Uh, the second source uh, is in the uh, Department of Homeland Security, and that source basically confirmed what the first source said uh, without uh, going any further on that. And then, then the following day, or the same day, I should say, you came up with uh, your own sources, Mike, and uh, why don't you tell us about those? Well, um, the source that, that first told me about this, and, and I've been doing some digging since then, but the, the, first, the source that first told me about this is a director level individual for a foreign intelligence agency that I have uh, occasion to speak with uh, now and then. And what I was told, and I was told this probably maybe 60 or 90 days ago, and um, I, I didn't put a lot of credence in it at the time, but as I've uh, researched, I, I have to put more and more credence in it. And, and as a qualifier, I, I have to say this up front that, you know, perhaps this is being floated as disinformation to discredit people and to discredit. So I, I have to give a caveat there. I don't think it is, but it could be just that, that type of effort. But I was told that to be very prepared on the dates of uh, August 17th and the dates of uh, September 26th that a planet-sized object would be passing its, uh, passing very, very near the Earth. And I was told that the distance, the closest distance would be um, maybe five to 10 Earth diameters. It would come that close. And that we should be on the, uh, be prepared for massive earthquakes, and as a result of those earthquakes, uh, tsunami-level flooding in uh, coastal uh, areas. Now, since that time, I've done some more digging, and I, I spoke with uh, intelligence sources within the U.S. who not only confirmed that, but added some more fuel to the fire. And one of the things is, is that this object is coming in at an extremely high rate of speed. And um, what uh, what the, the, the other concern is, besides just the, the, the near passage, is that as this thing passes through the uh, asteroid belt, it's going to disturb the orbit, the stable orbits of many asteroids that are out there that are orbiting, and be like a, uh, a cue ball on a billiard table and send these things going helter-skelter in every direction so that no one knows where they're going to end up and uh, what their ultimate destinations are going to be and that we may be living with after effects of this for a number of years into the future absolutely and uh, then you had a second source uh, i understand as well well the second source was the one within the u.s government there was another uh, my, my primary source was from a foreign intelligence agency right right, right. well uh the the distance that you described uh, ten times the the earth, the, the earth is about twenty four thousand miles in diameter um, so uh, ten times that would only be a quarter million miles um, <laughs> that's about the distance of the moon by the way yeah that that's close and, and uh, I, I've been told that this the size of this object um, could be as big as as, as the moon could be um, it, it's, it is being tracked currently, and the primary tracking station is that large uh, dish in uh, Puerto Rico, I believe it is. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm trying to learn more and as much as I can, as quickly as I can, because this will affect a lot of people. Now, I also have to tell you, I have been told point blank information that I can't share because I said I was told if I go on the air with this that my my truck's gonna blow up with me in it <laughs> and uh, okay. uh, and and mostly what that has to do with the high rate of speed it's traveling at and how it achieved that high rate of speed um, 
you know, the, the the term slingshot comes to mind. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, well, when, when this yeah, when this thing comes into our solar system, Mike, it it's, it it comes over. It's coming from the south, by the way. And as it gets clo deeper into the so our solar system, uh, approaching our sun, it picks up speed. Uh, does a loop to loop around the speed, around the sun, excuse me, where it slows down and then and then it starts picking up speed as it goes back out. Uh, now the size you're describing is not the size I've been hearing for forever for the tenth planet. This sounds like something far smaller. Our moon is a fairly small rock compared to the size of uh, Planet X or Nibiru. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused on that. Uh, I have been told also that Nibiru, or the 10th planet, has a debris field about a quarter million miles wide, which would put us well within the debris field if it's coming that close. Well, you know, John, I, I, I have to be honest here. In, there's, I don't know what I don't know, and I'm having a hard time discerning what is real information from what is disinformation right right because that that's one of the things that that um the powers that be will do is they will give you bits of information but they'll also give you bits of disinformation right and so it it's up to us to use our our own discernment to try to determine hey what's real and and, and what's bunk and uh, i I'm, I'm struggling with this i, I have I to agree, be very agree. honest well i i uh, the quant and I've described this live on the air. I know you typically don't listen to my show because you're trying to get ready for your own mic. But typically, what I do with this is, uh, first of all, I describe the quandary that I find myself in, and I think you find yourself in. Also, we come across information like this uh, from reliable sources that don't know each other. If it's true and we don't report it, then we could be directly responsible for a lot of lives being lost. If it's not true and we report it, well, then we get some egg on our face and life goes on. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, Mike, is encouraging people to look at these dates as an uh, opportunity for a training uh, opportunity for us to evaluate our prudent preparedness, uh, develop a plan A, a plan B, maybe even a plan C, uh, to be able to evacuate if we live on a coastal area and be able to have a safe haven to go to. Uh, the dates of August 17th and September 26th may or may not be the accurate dates on one hand. On the other, the scientists I work with, and I work with a number of scientists, uh, they're all in agreement that, yes, this thing's coming. And when it does come, it's gonna cause massive flooding in all coastal areas. As you probably know, Mike, I've debriefed about two dozen Navy veterans who were at the classified briefings, telling them that during their lifetimes, this coastal flooding would occur. So I agree with you, it, it's a quandary. Uh, it, it's something that we need to encourage people to, to do their own research, to uh, achieve their own level of discernment, and make decisions based on the knowledge that they gain. Well, well, John, if worse comes to worse, it may be a good time to take the family on a camping trip and just be a, away from any large urban areas at all. Because if, if something of, of this magnitude occurs, there's going to be mass panic. And when that happens, uh, your freeways are going to be like parking lots. And you're not going to be able to get away. You're going to be stuck where you are. Temperatures are going to flare. Uh, people are going to become desperate. And it, it, it might not be a bad time to uh, take advantage of uh, you know, a national park somewhere. Take the family out camping, be prepared, take as much stuff as, as you can um, you know, that, that's, that's useful, utilita uh, utilitarian to you, and, and just be somewhere else. If, if you've got yourself a, a cabin or a vacation home or you own rural property someplace, then uh, better yet, you know, it, it's, uh, you might, like I said, you, you may just want to be out of the cities. Well, and, um, you're right. It, you know, turn it into an enjoyable occasion, like you said, uh, a training exercise, if you will, so that, you know, you, you at least minimize the risk and you don't get yourself caught up in uh, a massive urban uh, uh, situation, you know, where, where you're, you're sitting on a freeway and you can't move because it's bumper to bumper and the cars around you are running out of gas because they've been sitting there for 10 hours idling. Right. Well, I, I, I've talked occasionally, I did recently, about the 
aerial photograph of Houston, Texas, when people were trying to evacuate when that uh, hurricane was headed that way. I, I counted the lanes up that weren't moving all in one direction. I think it was 12 or 14 lanes, uh, interstate highway and, and outer roads. It was amazing, an amazing, very scary photograph. Mike, we got a caller here, James from Fort Worth. Good morning, James.